Everybody, this is Big Anklevich coming at you from my favorite freeway in the Houston area. That's right, we're on the 69, dude. Um, uh, and I'm driving, you might notice that uh, this car looks slightly different. Um, this car is the replacement for Bumblebee, which, uh, if you saw the last show, died. It was run down by a Ford F-150 in a very slow speed collision and was totaled by the stupid, stupid frickin' Allstate. Don't buy Allstate insurance. They'll screw you over. Um, anyways, uh, so what are we doing here today? Well, I said I would be back. Uh, I was going to try to be back every week, or at least three times a month. Now, I don't know. I think I've been several weeks, probably even a whole month by this point, since the last show came out. But I'm, I'm trying to get on it. I'm trying to get better. Um, still writing, so I figured I'd talk a little bit about that. Uh, me and Rish had our little thing during uh, the month of... March, in which we tried to write every day. We challenged each other to write a story based on a Metallica song. I wrote a story called The Frayed Ends of Sanity. Hear them calling me. And it took me several weeks of writing every day, but I finished that story up. And uh, it's ready to go. Well, I don't know. I sent it off to Rish. He's supposed to read it and give me, you know, point out my typos, give me suggestions. Maybe we'll do some edits to it. But for the most part, it's ready to go. Um, then at some point, Rish will send me his story. I know uh, he at one point told me it was done. That was before our deadline, I think we had like two weeks or so to get it done, and he said it was done, but then when I asked him, he's like, well, it's not really done, but I got to a point that I could say, yeah, this is the end, and then they'll, they'll have to be uh, part two to this story. Um, then I think he decided that he wanted to keep going on it, so he started writing more. Instead of writing a part two, he just added it onto this part one, and part one just got longer. And so we kept going on it. I gave him, we get, you know, we had an extension on finishing the story up, and he went for it with that, and then I think he just kept on going. Right on past the deadline, he kept going. He's, he kept writing on it all the time, um, along with other stuff. I think he wrote a sketch for us to do on the show something about douchebaggery uh so you can look forward to that too but uh, i think he actually finished the the end of the story i'm pretty sure he made it to the end he hasn't sent me the story yet as far as i know unless it's somewhere in my email that i just missed or something i, I do miss a lot of emails because um just to get a lot of crap in there as well but, anywho, so yeah, I finished a whole story in March, and then uh, I moved on to get back onto Sunny and Gray. Sunny and Gray is, was a novel. Now it's uh, turned into a series of novels that I'm doing. Uh, I finished the first book of that series in... Uh, like May or April of last year and then I started right into writing the second part which at the time I was just thinking okay this is just gonna be a really really long book one book um, and I still kind of think of it that way it's one story but part one I finished and I'm working on part two and uh, I've started working on it. I was going kind of slow because 
It had been a whole year since the last time that I wrote anything on it, or close to a whole year anyways, and I'd forgotten where I was, what I'd written, how things went, you know, the details of the stuff I had forgotten. And um, so what I wound up doing was getting a program, an app on my phone that could use the Siri voice or whatever voice and read the book out loud to me. And I just, uh, on my commute every day, put it on and listened to it. And now I'm caught up, so I was poking along because I couldn't remember what uh, had happened in the book. So I'd write, you know, I'll do 100 words today, or I'll do 50. I mean, I, I there was one day, I swear, I, I only wrote like a sentence, and it was just basically to say, hey, I wrote today. <laughs> uh, I really had, I didn't know where to go with it, and I was kind of stuck, and I didn't want to go any further and write stuff that was wrong and then I would have to go back and fix it. And so uh, I finally finished listening up to the point uh, where I am at now. And so I know what's going on in the story. Uh, I've kind of started working on the outline a little bit. Um, and I'll, I'll get uh, working on that outline a little further because I do like having a basic outline so that I know where I'm going because I, I find it to be a little daunting, I guess, to not know where I should go next. I like to always know where I'm going next with the story. So that's where I'm at with writing. I'm, I'm still trying to write every day and uh, I haven't written yet today, so when I get home, that's what I'm going to have to do. Uh, the one thing that I think is kind of interesting about writing, and I, I saw it, I think, on a, a, a video. There's this YouTube guy that I've been watching a lot of his videos. The guy's name is What I've Learned. And uh, I want to say he did a, a video talking about willpower or something about your brain, or I don't remember what it was. Uh, may have actually been something else. I don't remember exactly where I heard it, unfortunately. But if I can find the video that it came from, I'll try and put it in the, the notes down underneath the video. But uh, he talked about willpower, and there was like a study where people uh, were given some diet to keep. And the interesting thing that they discovered in this study, when people kept this diet, uh, you know, doing, eating certain stuff every day uh, and basically flexing their willpower, working out their willpower, their willpower got stronger and they were able to make improvements in other parts of their life. Um, you know, it, it improved them elsewhere. And, I, and I've noticed that myself, you know, just uh, doing the writing every day was one step but now I've kind of moved on and I'm working hard on, on what I eat and trying to make sure I eat uh, well. And I've, I've stuck to my diet for more than two weeks now. Uh, intermittent fasting, if you know what that is, I've been doing that. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm about to start working on some other things. Uh, I want to start like meditating every day because that's supposed to be really good for you. Especially for your uh, blood pressure, which is something that I need to work on and get down. My doctor gonna wring my neck if I don't. Um, so yeah, I am uh, I'm working on that. Exercising too is gonna be uh, coming up here shortly, um, etc. And uh, I'll tell you more about that stuff in future ankle casts. I've got to do one every week or so, as I said, so I'll, I'll have, I'll need some topics uh, to talk about. So there's that. Um, you may wonder why, I don't know if you can tell, but uh, this is not being shot on 
the normal uh, GoPro-esque camera that I use to do the uh, podcast with. Uh, That's because I had a little bitty uh, accidente with uh, the GoPro-esque camera. Um, yeah, the, the family and I went on a, uh, a trip out to New Orleans just a few weeks ago. And while on that trip to New Orleans, we went on a uh, little boat tour through the canals and bayous uh, in the Barataria Preserve, the swamp there near New Orleans. And uh, that was really cool. Uh, It was pretty amazing. We got to see a whole bunch of animals. They had gators out there and turtles. We saw some some of the big birds that you see in marshland type areas. We saw an ibis, and we saw an egret, and we saw a great blue heron. We even saw some baby bald eagles up in a in a nest. Um, they weren't they were pretty large. They weren't what you would really call babies anymore. They're probably on the verge of flying away at this point. But uh, they didn't have the bald head. So they weren't adults. I don't know when that comes in, but they weren't the adults. They were the babies that we saw. Yeah, we got on this boat, and I had my GoPro-esque camera, and uh, I thought, oh, this will be a good place to use this camera. I can, you know, set it up right here on the... uh, railing of the boat and I'll just have it pointed right out the front and you know it'll just be uh, it'll just be giving me the the view out the front of the boat the whole way and I can you know use that for something cool maybe do a sped up version of it so we get the whole trip real fast or I don't know it'd be something cool that I could do with this so I got out you know the the camera came with this little mini briefcase kind of a thing that was just full of attachments so that you could attach your GoPro to something you know it's got different angles and straps and all sorts of stuff and I tried first to strap it to the rail but the strap was a little too big the rail had to be like three times the size that it was for it to work so instead I uh, decided I could still use the strap, but it would just hang down from the strap. Um, So I was getting it all hooked up and I had it clipped in, but I needed to put a second clip in so that it would face the right direction. So I was working on that when the camera slipped out of my hand. And it bounced down and it hit the bench and it rolled along the bench and then it went floop right over through the bars of the rail and out and I heard it go kersploosh into the water and I looked over the edge of the uh, rail and it was it was just gone I mean the 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 water was probably three feet deep tops Uh, I think it was less than that probably more like two to one foot deep where the boat was sitting but this picture right here is what it looked like the this is the exact spot where my camera splooshed into the water and as you can tell the water was a little opaque uh it's like a river of chocolate or something here augustus gloop could be uh in that water guzzling away at the chocolate and you would even see him you wouldn't know and so yeah my camera fell right into that and the funny thing was everybody saw it everybody else that was on the boat saw that my camera fell into that and they were like oh no oh my gosh this guy just lost his gopro camera into the water they didn't know it was a gopro-esque camera so they thought I'd lost like a $400, $500 camera into the water when actually I'd lost a $50 camera into the water. Now that still sucks. 50 bucks is 50 bucks. But 
you know, wasn't going to set me back that much. But uh, one guy was intent on me, you know, rescuing it. So he's like, hey, uh, maybe the captain has some kind of a net or something that you can get it out with. And so I was like, all right, yeah, I guess I'll give that a shot. And I asked the captain. And the captain was this great dude with this, like, really awesome uh, Cajun accent. Um, I remember at the very start of the cruise, some girl asked him, uh, he said, oh, any questions you can ask, just ask away. And she says, uh, how often do you see uh, gators uh, on, a, uh, on, on these cruises? And he said, every day. <laughs> I don't know if that was a very good rendition of a Cajun accent, but you know that little firefly on uh, the princess and the frog? He sounded just like the firefly. Um, so... It, it, he was awesome. Anyways, I asked him uh, at the urgings of this other passenger on the boat to if he had something that I could look for my camera with, and he found a fish net or something like that that was on a on a pretty long stick a pole, I guess would be the right word for that. And uh, I went over and I fished around in the water trying to find my camera. I could feel hard-ish feeling things. That could have been it as I moved it around, but the the bottom of the of the canal probably had like I don't know a foot thick layer of just silt and like dead leaves and sticks and crap down there. There was just tons of stuff, and so when I would dig out and I'd pick it up, there was just the the net was just full. And, you know, I kind of shook it around to see even if I got it. And I didn't. So, and then I'd have to dump it out and try again. I tried like four or five times. And then I finally just gave up and said, yeah, this camera's gone. Way to go, dumbass. Next time, assemble your mount a little further away from the edge. <sighs> Funny thing was, uh, later in the in the boat my daughter dropped her phone and it almost went into the water too we almost really blew it and her phone was like brand new she'd just gotten it for her birthday so uh we almost really blew it on this trip her phone was worth much more than my um, gopro-esque camera is worth so anyway yeah that's why i'm using my cell phone to shoot this uh, ankle cast with. Funny thing is, this is now the second time that I've shot this ankle cast. I shot it once on the way to work, uh, but right as I, uh, you know, when I finished, I took the phone down and I turned it off and I noticed a little, one of those triangular signs with the exclamation point on it up in the corner. And I was like, what is that? And I clicked on it and it said the, f the Flash is disabled on this camera until it cools down more. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. Because it was sitting up on the dashboard in the little uh, tripod that I make out of a paper cup taped to the dashboard. It's been sitting up there, and the sun was shining down on it the whole time. Plus, it was getting hot because it was on and filming the whole time. And, yeah, it was too hot. To, uh, to function, so I turned it off and let it cool off, and then when I was at work, I turned it back on and tried to look and see how the picture came out on the camera, and there was a thumbnail, and I clicked on it to watch the video, and instead it put up the picture that I'd taken before the video. Uh, so, and the video's just gone. It won't, it won't show me any video. So, I mean, I haven't got home yet. I was gonna get home and plug it into the computer and see if maybe it was there, but there was just some kind of a weird thing that wouldn't show up on the phone itself. But I figured on the drive home, I'd just reshoot it. And now that the sun's not out anymore, so it won't be shining on the phone, hopefully it won't get too hot. It could just be that it gets too hot because it's filming for 25 minutes or whatever. Um, I guess we'll find out. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, I to told myself that I had to do 
at least one ankle cast with a phone before I could buy a new GoPro-esque camera because, you know, I'm not going to put another 50 bucks into a camera if I'm too lame to do the ankle casts. And so I had to prove that I'm going to do them. So here I am doing it. And, yeah, now uh, I've proven it. So <laughs> and since it makes my camera hot, I'll probably just go straight home and uh, order that new camera because it needs to, needs to be done. Uh, the phone is probably not a good option. Hopefully the picture doesn't utterly suck. I've got the light on here. Um, hopefully that's enough light that you can see me. But anyways, that is, uh, that's my ankle cast for today. I'm going to try and be back next week with another one. Uh, I'll give you a new report on how the riding is coming and, uh, you know, another fun story about another stupid thing that I did. You know, maybe, maybe I'll talk about the hundred dollars that I also lost while I was, uh, in New Orleans. Uh, we'll see, uh, we'll see what next week brings us. But anyways, thanks for watching or listening, depending on how you, uh, took part in this ankle cast and I will see you again next time uh, you know write keep writing because that's what I do uh, or if you're not a writer whatever it is that you love do it okay thanks everybody see ya Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to a great place. You're off and away. Your goal should be a dream with a deadline. That's why I gave you five years. Do it. Do it. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. Take the shot. There will always be things in the way you dream. Don't let your dreams be dreams. You go out and you find why not. You surround yourself with why not. Live a why not life, man. There are a million no's, but all you need is one yes. Where we are today is where we are. Today's the starting day. I know what we're gonna do today. Just do it! Do it! And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. That's all it takes to be successful is an attitude. It's an awesome feeling when you truly believe that you're going to be successful. Nothing is impossible. Dreams don't come true. Dreams are made true. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Bye bye, boy! Have fun storming the castle! Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye bye! Bye!